mistake, Mr. President.
Well, I just again, I just want to commend you for all of that. This is a picture of what's happening all over America. You can be very proud that you're out in front. Here. Thank you for letting me come in and stop production for the writing. Man says, back up, let's Speak. back up. Come on, all the way back. Come on, the driveway. Ron, Ron, you want to do a back shot over here? Charlie? Charlie just went the other way. Charlie's behind him, right? Y'all need that? No, I think we're all right. Yeah, I'm going to wait till I get one clear. Hey, what's the Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. topographical map is a, a new town in this area across about 25 minutes from here called Las 
Roundtable because Dallas is the number one city in the country for Housing Start, and Las Colinas is one of the best examples in the country of uh, new home building development. Well, that's remarkable. Eh? <laughs> it helps to get a fresh perspective. You know, if you stay in Washington too long, the world begins to look like the twilight zone. And I'm, I have, as I say, just come from that site in Grand Prairie, and I'm the most. Uh, that, that isn't so. It's opportunities for hard work and risk taking by, uh, by people that eyes can flourish. Irresponsible taxing and spending policies in the years prior to this administration gave us. Your industry had its legs knocked out from under it by ruinous inflation and killer interest rates. It takes time to put a program in place and it takes time for it to start. Growth last year was a robust 6%. And the first quarter growth this year suggests the recovery is going to continue at a healthy rate. But I'm also encouraged by the fact, and this may sound strange, that the figures that were released this morning, the Commerce Department, uh, suggest that there is building permits, which were only 730,000 in the fall of 81, have risen to nearly 2 million. That's a 166% increase. In February, 721,000 increase. But the strength surging through your industry and the rest of well known. Since our economic recovery program took effect, the decline in mortgage rates from a peak of about 18 down to 13 and a half translates into a typical savings of $225 in the monthly payment for families that are now buying homes. Inflation has been reduced by, and people suggest that we should be frightened because the economy is growing too fast. Too many people are finding jobs, and this will push up interest rates. Well, no one will ever convince me that economic growth is bad for us. Why? Taxing the money out of the private system will not eliminate money from the private credit market every bit as much as the federal government borrows it. The same amount of money is going to be paid because the government takes it in taxes, the program we've begun and which is so long overdue. The answer is economic growth and a responsible program to control the government. We've made a proposal, as you know, for a down payment on the deficit would be a good first step. And yesterday, the Finance Committee in the Senate uh, passed that. In 1982, an agreement was made with me and I'm really going to have to judge for themselves who are serious about the problem. I'm willing to do my part, but I will not simply give in to those who would take us back into recession and or play fast and loose with the security of our country and evaluate it through the departments and agencies right now. But for tangible progress to be made, we need commitment from the Congress, which until now has not been forthcoming. Our board of directors last May, home builders are leading the recovery by the sweat of their brow and the strength of their nerve. That is still true today. Last year, we built about 1.7 million housing units, an increase of 60% from the previous year. This year, we expect to start 1.8 million units. During February, new homes were being started at an annual rate of 2.2 million, and new homes are selling at their fastest pace in four years. Looking back, this recovery represents a major triumph for your administration. You put America back on its feet. You put Americans back to work. You licked inflation and helped create an economic climate in which it was possible for small builders like myself to build affordable housing for young people just starting families and careers. But the recovery, Mr. President, has reached a critical turning point. Looking ahead and beyond today's robust economic news, there's a great deal of uncertainty in the marketplace. This uncertainty is being expressed by the typical member of our association who constructs Deficits reduce our ability to compete in the world market, and deficits threaten to upset the current economic recovery. Mr. President, the time is running out. Do you want to respond, or shall I ask the next man to... Uh... Well, whichever is, uh, is suitable here. I, I would like to comment this with regard to the interest rates and, and what you just said here, with regard to the connection to the deficit. Uh, and I hope I've made clear deficits are something we shouldn't have had them for the last 50 years. Saw a great upsurge. We've gone from to, to 12 something percent over above five percent of business investment in new plant and equipment and so forth. And at the same time, so we will not have any gain at all by bringing down the deficit by taxing investment. 
that's why we're particularly concerned, not with what happened in the house, as you indicated, or the increase of the depreciation line, or the accelerated cost recovery period going from 15 to 20 years, because that's a huge increase. Also end up with about a million fewer rental housing units than we would otherwise have. The main sources of financing of all this activity, the real estate sales and new home building that we're talking about this morning, we have been in that position of market dominance in the past, and despite some of what has been written and said in recent years, some of which was just said on my starboard side before you got here uh, this morning, we remain the primary mortgage lending source today. In 1983, we had an all-time record lending year in our institution, $137 billion in mortgage loans by savings institutions. Now, what made this volume possible is the increasing acceptance of the adjustable rate mortgage. 60 to 60 to 75 percent hit again with higher and higher interest rates. And underlying that, will Washington be able to get these uh, huge deficits under control? Now, I, I manage a small financial institution in the cornfields of Indiana. And I talk to men and women every day when I'm in my office before. And home prices were not spiraling upward as they had been. In fact, to the surprise of many people, uh, home prices were actually lower, our study showed, uh, in 1983 than in 1981. That is median prices. But we should not be misled by the recent strong showing of housing. Federal borrowing to cover federal spending takes so much of the credit pool the businesses and families are short-chained. We simply can't bid competitively for it. Now, there's also, also an important new factor that we're confronting with the deregulation of the... So we in the savings institutions want to be sure the deficit problem is dealt with now, while there is still time to bring it under control. And we are hopeful, as you are, Mr. President, and as you have said many times, that a nonpartisan approach will, in fact, get something done. We're not concerned. Our question, the deficit, as you've heard, is a major concern to all of us, and especially to the building industry. And the there virtually aren't any steps that I won't take that they can be taken without punishing any particular segment of our society and applicable to some of the things that uh, you were saying, sir. The, in this year, and I know this before, we have to and are looking at the whole structure. And I have to say, I we're all and should be indebted to Peter Grace and the more than 2,000 business. And, but they came back. This idea come to me when I was first elected governor of California, and the state was almost in as bad a shape as the federal government is. And only there we had a constitutional requirement that in the first six months that I was in office, I had to restore the balance that had been lost in the previous administration out there. And I called on business. Yet yeah, the government is going to be serious about keeping inflation down. And uh, if I could cite myself as an example again, I remember once back in those motion picture days, I knew that someday they'd come to an end and I bought a retirement policy. And I wanted to think that I could retire and continue to live the same way I was living. So I bought the policy on that basis. Well, the policy finally came to the payment date, retirement age, and the policy by that time, the biggest single enemy of it all. There is no way that you can have a sound economy where a person is expected to invest or put money away and know that the payoff time the dollar is only going to be worth half what it was or less uh, when it comes time to pay up. So the people with the money to loan, they're going to have to have more of a guarantee that it isn't going to happen again. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, our foreign ministers are here to sign 
the science and technology agreement between Thailand and the United States. And the agreement represents another new area of cooperation and furthers the close ties that historically marked our relationship. And with me now is Prime Minister Prem, who's visiting here for the second time, and we're very pleased to have him here. Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, distinguished guests, the agreement on cooperation in science and technology just concluded constitutes a new dimension in the long established relationship and cooperation between our two nations. As the United States is the world leader in science and technology, Thailand stands to benefit significantly, significantly from the transfer of your ingenuity as a strong and unwavering friend and ally of the United States in Southeast Asia. Thailand, with the enhanced prosperity generated by the scientific and technological cooperation with the United States, will complement American long-term interests in the region. We look forward to an active cooperation in the field of science and technology, and this agreement is an important first step in that direction. <laughs> 